Thank you. Good morning. I, I wasn't really listening to the introduction. I have to apologize. When I get the commissioner of education or the chief of staff in a room uh, where we're sitting close, I have to conduct business uh, when I get a chance to. So I was, I was visiting with the commissioner here. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to be here with you this morning. Thank you uh, very much for all of the work that you do uh, on behalf of our young Minnesotans. It's really important work, and, and we great, greatly appreciate it. So thank you. Um, this. Uh, in the introduction you heard, we obviously uh, uh, did some, some good bipartisan compromise work this week on, on our uh, relief bill for the uh, Minnesota CARE stuff, yeah. It's not always easy to get to that, but when you do, it's, it's, uh, it's okay to celebrate it a little bit. So um, the, the last few months have been a little uh, tenuous in, in getting to that agreement, but I think ultimately the product that we came up with is a good one. Uh, it provides the relief that, that I think we all wanted. We used the governor's uh, plan to do that, so folks that are affected by this will get a 25% reduction. Um, but we also put some, some reforms in. Uh, some of that for access will help folks uh, affected by this get access to doctors that are closer to them, will help them continue uh, treatments that they're on currently. Uh, but all in all, it should be a good first step in, in repairing uh, and providing the needed stability to the individual marketplace. So uh, with that, the rest of the session um, will probably speed by very quickly, and I hope uh, uh, you're engaged with your legislators and making sure that they understand what your priorities are uh, as we work through the process. Uh, we did set our deadlines yesterday for our committee deadlines. I don't think I can tell you from memory what they are. The third deadline, the, the important one for the budget bills, is they have to be out of finance committee by March 31st, uh, which is about a week before our, our Easter and Passover break. Um, it's a fairly aggressive schedule, so things will move fairly quickly. Um, but hopefully, uh, uh, with everyone engaged in the process, we'll end up with a really great uh, product. So uh, the governor put his budget out uh, this last week. Um, he obviously has outlined his priorities. You'll see our priorities coming forth um, as we move through the session. And, and I think everybody is waiting a little bit as well for um, the February forecast, which I think this time does come in February. I agree with the, the observation that the November forecast and February forecast are almost never in February and November, uh, but that's what we call them. Um, so the February forecast, right now we have as of the November forecast of last year, we have a $1.4 billion surplus projected for the, for the next biennium, which is what we're budgeting for. About 700 million of that is money that will carry forward from the current biennium that we're in, and 700 million um, is projected surplus in the next biennium. Um, and then beyond that, in the tails, uh, it's also projected about $1.4 billion of surplus. So, uh, the general consensus as I pull people around the Capitol is that we are likely to see the February forecast, uh, the revenues increase or the, the projected revenues increase, which is a very good sign. It will help us and, and make our jobs, I think, a little bit easier. Um, our, our priorities for our caucus, uh, you know, obviously, um, are, are going to be in investing in our early learners, investing in education. Uh, that has something uh, been something in the past that we have agreed with the administration on, um, and we've been able to come, come to agreement. We may not start in the same place, but uh, obviously uh, in order to pass a budget, we have to end in the same place. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm optimistic that we will, and, and I think that uh, our early learners will be uh, well represented, I think, in, in both budgets. Uh, I do think it's important to talk about the differences. Uh, you know, the governor is proposing an, uh, an additional investment into a program that we started, which is kind of, I, I've been calling it a pilot program. I'm not sure if that's right, Brenda, but <laughs> it's a beginnings of a, it's a permanent program, right? <laughs> Um, and, but it's more, it's more leaning towards uh, a, a universal pre-K model. Um, we obviously have, have proposed in the past and advocated for um, a scholarship investment uh, for our early, early learners, making sure that we're, we're targeting those dollars at the folks that need them the most. And, and we have actually had very bipartisan support on that approach as well. Um, I, I think if we continue to focus on the, the biggest problems that, that Minnesotans face, and, and the governor's job and my job is, is to really focus on, uh, at a higher level, um, how, how can we do things, you know, the, the, the big things, the, the, the big thinking things like closing the achievement gap. This is a problem, um, and, and I, I'd love to say that I have joked about, but it's not a joking matter, um, but it's, it's been the problem that, that uh, 
folks have have kind of become to appreciate and 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 you know admire the problem but we don't really do anything to solve the problem or we don't do enough to solve the problem and i think we we have to stop admiring this problem and 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 start rolling up our sleeves and fixing it i remember sitting in the in the residence with the governor talking i can't remember now but a little over a year ago i think when the governor was proposing a special session to deal with um, a, a disparity in, in wages between uh, minorities and, and non-minority folks in similar jobs. And, and, you know, to me, you can't solve that problem by just calling a special session and, and throwing some money at the problem. The problem stems from the fact that we have the highest achievement gap in the country and, and we're not giving uh, our lower income and minority students the tools that they need to be successful when they leave school. Um, and, and frankly, we, if we can't make that connection and if we, if we can't admit um, that we can't solve this problem until we solve this one, uh, we're frankly leaving these kids behind and, and we really need to start uh, focusing our efforts and energies on that. And, and um, what I say may be unpopular with my party, uh, but it's, it's the honest truth. It's going to cost some money to do it, um, and we're going to have to spend some money to do it. But we have to make sure that we give these kids the tools they need. Now I'm going to say something that might be pop unpopular with the other party. <laughs> um, we need to give parents some choice. Uh, if, if kids are in a situation that's not working for them or their family, we need to give parents a choice to put them into a, a, a school that works better for their situation. And it, it may be a, a, a public school uh, pre-K option or, or you know, public school option, but if it's not for their family, we need to give them that flexibility. I was speaking to a group not too long ago and I made the comment, I kind of liked it after I said it. Um, you know, pr <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, you know, private school shouldn't just be for rich kids. Um, if, if that situation works better for a kid that's not finding success in a public school, let's figure out a way to make that happen. And I don't, I'm not trying to say we're going to do uh, vouchers or something like that, but um, let's start to provide some flexibility to get these kids into a situation where they can be successful. It has to be focused on the kids. Um, I will say, too, that, that my caucus is, is willing and, and ready. We've got two chairs. I'd, don't know that they're here. I think they're on the agenda maybe later, but uh, Representative Jennifer Loon is, is uh, the chair of our Education Finance Committee. She's phenomenal. Um, she is really passionate about these issues, and, and I hope that you get to see a little bit of that today. I think that you will. Um, and then Representative Sandra Erickson uh, is the chair of our Education Policy Committee. She's actually a uh, fun story. She's actually one of my high school teachers, and I see one of my classmates here uh, that's uh, joining us today as well, but um, it's fun for me to be able to serve with her in the legislature, and, and uh, now she doesn't scold me. I get to scold her once in a while, so it's a re reversal, reversal of fortunes. Um, but, but as we work through this process um, of figuring out how to solve these big problems, we have to do it together, and, and we're going to challenge. We're going to work with, roll up our sleeves, and work with anybody who's willing to work with us. Uh, but we're also going to hold accountable uh, groups that don't have the best interest of kids in mind, and 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 we're going to always try to refocus back not only to the problem that we're trying to solve. How do we make sure we get these kids the best education possible? Um, but let's make sure that we put them, their education, and their future first, before anything else. Um, and, and I will be holding any groups accountable to make sure that we do that. So uh, I, th I think it's absolutely vital in, in solving these problems. Um, you know, the other big issues that we're going to deal with this session, obviously we haven't had tax relief for the last couple of years. I think there's some things that, um, in a bipartisan fashion, everybody's talking about doing. So I'm optimistic we can get some tax relief done. Um, there are uh, some, some bonding uh, needs that have gone un, unmet the last couple of years in that we didn't have a large bonding bill uh, over the course of the last couple of years. I think uh, folks on both sides of the aisle right now are talking about doing that. Um, just in the reality of how this place works, I think those two things are probably connected. Um, I, I, I don't think they should be, and I wish they wouldn't be, but I think they ultimately probably are. Um, that's just the reality. So uh, I'd kind of watch for those to, to, to work through the process. Um, 
and, and beyond that, I think, uh, you know, setting the state's budget and, and showing folks that, that even with divided government, we can work together, uh, those are going to be the biggest priorities for, for our caucus. And, and we're going to want to see some investments in education and in our early learners, uh, but we're also going to want to see some accountability. And, and if it means that we have to rethink things and do things differently, um, that's what we're going to do. I've, I've challenged all of our chairs uh, to roll up their sleeves and, and really become experts on uh, their agencies and their budget and, and uh, work with their counterparts in, in the agencies to, to uh, figure out how we can do things better. Um, we, my caucus, I am going to announce a, what has become kind of a, a personal uh, mission or project uh, probably next week, um, and it's going to be targeted at modernizing government and state government and, and using uh, technology tools to, to better serve uh, the, the folks in, that, that we serve, our constituents, Minnesotans. Um, it might mean, uh, you know, making it easier to access a, a driver's license online or something like that, but it, but it also, uh, and, and, and in the same way that we talk about getting uh, kids uh, 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 or having a better approach to educating kids and making sure that we're focused on them. Um, I think we in state government need to focus on our customer service experience and making sure that uh, you know, it's not taking somebody too long in line to, to access a state service. Um, so modernizing our, our technology infrastructure, uh, but really redesigning the way we provide our services so that it's customer service focused. And um, so we're going to roll out probably a, 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 a initiative. I'll, I'll, I won't say more than that. Uh, next week, so watch for that. Um, it's something that, that I've been pretty passionate about. In my first term as speaker, it was things that I wanted to do, um, but unfortunately, you hit the ground running and have to set a state budget in the first five months of your of your term, um, and then you spend the next you know 19 months uh, trying to figure out how you do long term stuff. And really, it should be reversed. You should you should kind of analyze things, um, and and then set the budget the second year of the biennium. But I don't think that works with a governor's term, so it's probably not likely to change that. Uh, but I think we have to um, in 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 much the same way. Uh, as we're doing with the early learners and, and kids in, in uh, our K-12 system, uh, make sure that we're providing better service for all Minnesotans in everything that we do. And, and to me, that's what all of you are for and what we are for is just to hold ourselves and each other accountable uh, to make sure that we're using the resources that taxpayers have given us efficiently, uh, but also effectively. And, and it's not, uh, those are not mutually exclusive. Uh, you can do both. We can be more efficient and more effective at the same time. So that's going to be the targeted goal of this. And it's not going to be a, a, a backward-looking thing. It's going to be a, a positive, forward-looking thing. And I hope it'll be a, a productive thing. I've spoken with the governor about it a little bit, and I think he is uh, excited about it as well. I want to look at my list because I don't want to miss anything while I'm up here. Um, I think that uh, on, on the early learning thing, I did want to talk a little bit. I picked up the mini minds sheet that was on the table here. Promotional plug, sorry. <laughs> Um, the Parent Aware program, I think, is something that Jennifer Loon, and I think she'll talk about this when she speaks, is very passionate about. I think it's a, a, a way of kind of measuring the quality to make sure that our kids are accessing quality programs. Um, there is a, 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 a flaw in that um, out in greater Minnesota, there aren't a lot of Parent Aware options. So I, I think we want to see an expansion of that and making sure that um, that you can access that wherever you are in the state and, and parents can see that uh, and get that sort of information about the, the, their educational options uh, regardless of where they are in the state. So, um, and I think that we will again uh, continue to, to advocate for scholarships and making sure that our kids, um, those early learners have those options. Um, with that, uh, thank you so much. I, I always tell groups when I speak to them when they come to St. Paul, um, do not underestimate uh, your relationship with your legislators and how important that is. Um, and, and don't let the first time that you meet your legislator be when you absolutely need something. Um, it's true. Uh, you know, make sure that you're in visiting uh, and building a relationship or, you know, if you've got a facility in their district, invite them out, show them what you do, talk to them about why what you're doing is so important and, and, and so that they understand it. So when you do come into their office, automatically you've already got a friend, you've got somebody, you've already built a relationship and, and uh, they're going to trust you and, and when you're asking for something uh, or talking to them about how important a program is, um, they're going to un understand it better. So uh, don't underestimate that ability. For those of us that are here in St. Paul as 
as legislators. It, it can feel during the five months that while, while we're here like we're on an island um, and we're very uh, distant from, from those back home. So the best thing that we have is when, when a constituent from home comes into our office and talks to us about what's going on. Um, the lobbyists in the room aren't going to like to hear this, but and we love the lobbyists and you have great representation at the Capitol, um, but it, it, it's no substitute for you coming in yourself and, and talking to your legislator about what's important to you. Um, that's the most meaningful visits that we get at the Capitol. So I've probably gone way over time, sorry. Um, thank you so much for what you do. I, I, I say that very sincerely. Uh, we appreciate all that you do and we hope that we can work together over this session uh, to make all of us a little bit more successful. Thank you.